It's almost here. After 10 years of planning, Avengers Infinity War is almost upon us. That's right, Thanos is coming for the Infinity Stones. Six cosmic artifacts so powerful they have the ability to grant their holder godlike powers over all of existence. Hey nerds, I'm Trent, and today we're going to look at the location of each of the Infinity Stones Thanos is going to be gunning for in the MCU, as well as talk a little bit about their powers. Now, the colouring of the stones in the movies is different compared to the comics, so to avoid confusion we are just going to be referring to the way the stones are depicted in the MCU. The first stone to appear in the movies was contained in the Tesseract, better known to fans as the Cosmic Cube. It was first seen in the post credit scenes of Thor before being heavily featured as an instrument of power at the hands of the Red Skull in Captain America, the first Avenger. It wasn't until Avengers Age of Ultron however that we learnt that the cube was actually the casing for the Space Stone when Thor had a vision of each of the stones forming the Infinity Gauntlet. The Space Stone allows the user to control space, making teleportation around the cosmos a simple feat. The Avengers made a cube a target for Loki, which he used its power to create a portal for the Chitari, the alien species to come through and invade Earth. At the end of the movie, the cube is taken by Thor back to Asgard and put in Odin's treasure vault, along with the other powerful relics. However, the cube recently resurfaced in the final act of Thor Ragnarok, with the trickster god Loki stopping by and cheekily grinning at it before Asgard's demise. Now while we didn't see Loki take the cube, it could be presumed that he did, you know, because he's a giant dick. And particularly as a giant spaceship decided to cut off the Asgardian spacecraft with Loki on it. Now, coincidentally, Thanos was already in possession of an Infinity Stone, which he bestowed upon Loki in the Avengers in the form of his little scepter. The scepter was used to control the minds of various characters including the Hulk, Hawkeye and Eric Selvig. The all-important Eric Selvig. The Scepter fell into the possession of Baron Wolfgang von Strucker in Avengers Age of Ultron and later Tony Stark, who unintentionally created Ultron through Jarvis analysing the Scepter. Ultron stole the Scepter, breaking the casing to reveal the stone inside, which he used to create the perfect android which we would come to know and love as the Vision. Unfortunately for Ultron, Vision was captured by the Avengers before awakening and with the power of Thor's lightning awoke to be a good guy. Vision continues to work on the side of good and has entrusted himself the responsibility to look after the stone, which is permanently located in the middle of his forehead. Vision has been living at the Avengers compound in New York ever since. The Aether, the dark red blob of liquid from Thor the Dark World, yep, turns out that's an Infinity Stone too, the Reality Stone. It was shown in the Dark World that the liquid was able to distort reality by acting similarly to the Space Stone in transporting various objects to different worlds, like making Mjolnir transport to different realities or taking Thor away from the battle. We officially learnt that this was a reality stone once again in Thor's vision in Age of Ultron. Now in the post credit scene of Thor the Dark World, we see Volstagg and Lady Sif go to the planet Nowhere, which is the head of a dead celestial containing the location of the Collector's Museum. Here they meet the eccentric Tavalir Tavan, the Collector, whom they give the Aether, encasing it in some sort of containment unit. It's unclear what happens to the reality stone upon the destruction of the Collector's Museum, but I'm sure the Collector wouldn't leave such a valuable item without strict protective measures. Now speaking of the Collector, he has a close connection to the next Infinity Gem, the Power Stone. This stone was the object of desire in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, which Star-Lord stole from a deserted city, which fell into the hands of Ronan the Accuser, who was meant to give the stone to Thanos but decided, no nah, I'll keep it and use it for myself and bring death and destruction upon the Nova Corps on Xandar for revenge against the Kree Empire. <sighs> but during this generic plot, we were first introduced to the concept of the Infinity Stones when Star-Lord took the orb to the Collector's Museum, where we learned of its power to be only handled by the Celestials. Now, of course, being the MCU, the Guardians are a unique individuals and are able to channel the power to help defeat Ronan by the end of the movie. We last see the Power Stone held with the Nova Corps on Xandar, which can't bode well for them once Thanos and his minions come calling for the stone. The fifth stone made its debut in 2016's Doctor Strange. Encased within the eye of Agamotto, the Time Stone serves as a source of Strange's powers in the movie, encasing himself in a time loop to defeat the dread Dormammu. Glowing green, the Time Stone was revealed to be an Infinity Gem by Strange's trusty sidekick Wong. Strange continues to be in possession of the stone within the Sanctum Sanctorum in New York, last seen while wearing it in Thor Ragnarok whilst receiving a visit from Thor and Loki. Now that leaves the final Infinity Stone, the Soul Stone. 
In the comics, this allows the wielder to collect souls, see within another soul, and access the memories of those imprisoned within the stone, to name a few of the powers. Many thought this stone would appear in the Black Panther film, seeing as it's the final movie before Infinity War comes out. Alas, it was not to be. We still don't know the location of the Soul Stone. Could it be somewhere in the cosmos in a yet to be identified location? Possibly. Could Thanos already be in possession of the stone? That's also a likely prospect. However, there are some theories that could help solve this situation. The first is that the Soul Stone still is in Wakanda. We just don't know it yet. We do know that the Vibranium Mound came from an asteroid in deep space and contained special properties. The Vibranium also powered the heart-shaped herb, which granted the consumer the ability to visit the souls of the former Panthers on the astral plane. Could this ability be the energy seeping from the Vibranium Mound, which contains the Soul Stone? The trailer for Infinity War gives a clue, with the Chitauri invading Wakanda. Why would Wakanda be a target if there's no Infinity Stone there? They also attacked the Sanctum Sanctorum and New York, the residency of Doctor Strange and Vision respectively. Another theory comes from the end of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, where the Golden Aisha shows an entity within a cocoon known only as Adam. Fans from the comics would recognise this cocoon as belonging to the strange Adam Warlock, the main possessor and protector of the Soul Stone, and an inhabitant of Soul World. This may be a stretch as there's been no reports of Warlock appearing in the movie, but it would make an awesome surprise. Now the most far-fetched, yet possibly awesome reveal could be that Nick Fury's been in possession of the Soul Stone the entire time, having been kept off the grid for several movies. Some have speculated that he's keeping it behind his damaged eye. But I just can't see this happening. Ha. Now, knowing Infinity War is a two-part movie, we may not even see the Soul Stone at all until later movies like Ant-Man and the Wasp or Captain Marvel. Who knows? Anyway, that's where five of the six Infinity Stones are on the road to Avengers Infinity War. We all know that Thanos and his Black Order are gunning for the stones. It'll be interesting to see how that pans out for Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Let us know in the comments below where you think the Soul Stone might be. So that's it from me. Thanks for watching. I'm Trent, and I'll see you at the movies.